Hello, everyone, and welcome to another vocabulary lesson here at Study English with us. And in today's lesson, we're going to be learning words about transportation. And today we're going to try something new here at Study English with us. We're going to uh, present a lesson in English only. I believe we've done this a couple of times before, especially with vocabulary lessons. But today we want to uh, try a new idea where we're just uh, presenting in English and where we are not only um, doing drills on the individual vocabulary words themselves, but where I will also be talking a little bit about the words uh, in a kind of a conversational way. TK has been telling me that many of you have been writing in requesting lessons that have more to do with just listening and learning and uh, conversational uh, English. And uh, so I thought what we would do is try that with this vocabulary lesson today where it's just me, it's just English, TK's not here, and uh, we will be learning some new words but also talking about those words. And I will do my best to remember to speak slowly and clearly so that uh, you will be able to easily follow along. Uh, especially if you're uh, somewhat of an advanced student in English. What we're going to do is split the lesson up into two parts. And in the first part, I will be talking about the words that we're learning, putting them into sentences, and uh, maybe some commentary on some of the words that we're learning. And then in the second section of this lesson, we will just do vocabulary only. And so if all you want to do is learn the vocabulary, then skip to the last part of the lesson. In YouTube, you can just take your mouse and uh, or your finger and point to the slider bar and move that across so that you can get to uh, a point later in the video. And the vocabulary, I would say, would be about 70% down the timeline, and that's where we'll start with just vocabulary, no commentary. What I thought we might do is for every lesson that is English only, I will put a, a British flag up in the corner of the thumbnail for the lesson like this. And if you see that flag on the thumbnail, you will know that this is an English-only lesson, and it is going to be something that will be beneficial to everybody coming from whatever language you uh, are native in. And so with that, we want to welcome students from other countries, other languages, to our channel here, Study English with us. And with that introduction, let's get started with transportation. Car. Car. Probably one of the most popular methods of transportation is the car. And, uh, of course, another way of uh, terming this vehicle is an automobile. Automobile. And others might just call it a vehicle. Vehicle. But uh, here in Canada and the United States, there are many other ways to get down the highway. Another very popular vehicle here in Canada and the United States is the truck. The truck. A lot of men especially like this type of vehicle because they have room in the back of the vehicle to carry a lot of stuff. Men here in Canada and the U.S. like to carry a lot of things, especially if they are in one of the trade industries, like maybe a carpenter or an electrician. Having a truck a carpenter can go to the store, buy some lumber, 
throw it in the back of the truck, take it to his work site, and uh, it is very convenient. Now, there are many types of trucks, and so we should probably designate this vehicle a little bit further, and often you will hear someone say or, or call this vehicle a pickup truck. A pickup truck. And I believe in a few slides we'll see some different types of trucks. But uh, for now, let's go on to another popular vehicle here in Canada and the United States, and that is the van. Um, it's nice to be able to go around in a car, but if you need a little bit more space, either for your children or for your groceries uh, when you go to the store, it's very convenient to have a van. And this particular type of van is often also called a minivan. A minivan. And it is popular, uh, especially with uh, small families, where there might be two or three children in the family, and they're maybe getting to that age where uh, they have uh, soccer games to go to, or need to go to swimming lessons, or taekwondo lessons every afternoon after school. And uh, so the mother will load up their children into the minivan and take them to their after-school activities. And these uh, women are often called soccer moms. Soccer moms. And they uh, often will take their children in a minivan to their lessons. But there are other types of vans. Uh, another popular one is called a utility van, and you'll notice that it's a little bit different. It doesn't have the second set of doors for people to get into because it's primarily a way to carry things around. Uh, again, uh, people in the trade industry might use a utility van to carry all of their tools to the work site. Or if they are in the delivery business and they are taking packages to businesses or taking packages to people's homes, they might load up their utility van at the beginning of the day and then go through their route delivering packages using their utility van. Another popular way to get around town is to get a taxi. Now, taxi is uh, one of those words that I believe can be called a universal word. In other words, it is a word that is recognized in almost every language, taxi. And so it's probably not even a word that we need to have here at our vocabulary lesson because you already know taxi. But I thought I would put it in here because I found this image of a, a taxi uh, in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. And uh, while I was living there for five years, there were many times that we went into town, TK and I and the kids, and we would go in one of these Vinison taxis. And uh, so I've added this image there. But these days, uh, for the last five or six years or so, there's been other ways to get uh, from one place to another in a city. You don't have to take a conventional taxi anymore. You can download an app to your smartphone, and when you need to go somewhere, you just tap on your app and call somebody to come pick you up. You type in the address into your phone where you want to go, it may show you how much it's going to cost you, and you can accept it. You can choose what size of vehicle you want to come to your door. It's very convenient. And, of course, there's many different types of services that use this. And, again, these terms are probably universal because they're brand names. But you will probably know about the Uber. Uh, you may have uh, used the Lyft service. I believe one that's popular in many countries today is called Grab. I was recently in the Philippines, and uh, 
the Grab company is probably the most popular service to get from one place to another, in Manila at least. And uh, so while I was there, whenever I needed to go to the mall to do a little shopping, I would go down to the front desk at my hotel and I would say, you know, I need to go to the mall today. Can you call me a grab? And uh, I would sometimes say, I need to grab a grab. And they would uh, go onto their little smartphone and within a few minutes I would have a grab come to the hotel and take me to the mall. Now, we said that we would talk about other trucks. Here's one. A transport truck. Transport truck. Now, this is a truck that also takes packages or other manufactured goods, but rather than just take them across town, a transport truck is a vehicle that takes manufactured goods across the country. Now, these days, when everyone is concerned about global warming and reducing our carbon footprint, the transport truck it may not necessarily be the most eco-friendly way to take your goods or ship your goods across the country. And uh, so today, companies are looking at alternative ways that may be a little bit more energy efficient to move their products across the country. And we'll maybe take a look at some of those ways in a minute. But the transport truck is still very much operational here in Canada and the United States. And still on the highway, as I drive around, I see a lot of them on the highway today. And so it hasn't gone away just yet. I have heard that some companies are working on electric transport trucks, trucks that no longer use carbon fuel, but will use batteries. I'm a little bit skeptical that they could haul a big trailer load full of heavy equipment just using batteries, but we'll see. They're getting better and better as each year goes by. Now, another way to get across town, or perhaps even across the country, is to go by bus. Bus. Now, a bus is particularly popular with people who don't own a vehicle or may not know how to drive. And uh, it can be very convenient. You might have to get an Uber to get you to the bus station, but once you're there, you can buy a bus ticket to almost anywhere you need to go. Or at least it'll take you close to your final destination. You might need to grab a grab to get to the house after you reach the town where you're going. But it is a very convenient way to travel. You don't have to drive. Uh, somebody else can do all of the driving for you and you can just relax and look out the window at the countryside as it goes by. I actually enjoy taking the bus. Another way to get across the country is by train. In some cases, it's just across town, but uh, often you can take a train right across the country. Train. Train. And there are many different types of trains. Uh, one that is becoming more popular these days is called the bullet train. And when you hear reference to a bullet train, that usually means that it's a very fast train. It's probably not the one that uh, is going around the city making many stops. No, this is the one that goes quite some distance and as it gets out into the countryside, it picks up speed and goes very fast. And so that's why they call it a bullet train. Sometimes this is also called a high-speed train. A high-speed train. But even if the train is not very fast, 
it is uh, still a wonderful way to travel and see the country that you're visiting. And so, for example, if you're going to visit Europe as a tourist, you might want to get a Euro Pass, it's called. And that way, you can visit many countries throughout Europe using just the one ticket, the one pass, the Euro Pass. And as you go from country to country, you can enjoy the scenery by just looking out the window of your passenger train. In addition to passenger trains, we also have what's called cargo trains. Cargo train. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I was saying that some companies are trying to be more energy efficient when they ship their goods across the country and they may put their uh, oil, their products or other goods that they have manufactured onto a train and that way one or two engines can pull many cars behind it. This cargo train is also often referred to as a freight train. A freight train. And you can see in the photo here how shipping containers have been stacked one above the other on this very long freight train. And you can see how energy efficient this really is. Instead of uh, one container on a transport truck going across Canada and spewing out all of the fumes from its diesel engine times, oh, there must be three or four hundred containers on this train. So instead of having 300 transport trucks go across Canada here with just one or two engines, you can pull all of these containers all the way across Canada and it leaves a much smaller carbon footprint by using a freight train. Joshua, our son, really likes trains. And so uh, often when we are going to town from our house, uh, we come to a railway crossing and um, sometimes we can just slip right across. But if there's a train that's coming or it's a crossing, the guardrails come down and the freight train goes by and Joshua just loves to see that train go by and he sometimes will count how many cars are on that train as it goes by. So freight trains. Another kind of train that is very popular in uh, many cities today is called a commuter train a commuter train. And that is a train that people can use to go to work. And then when the workday is over, ride home to the small town where they might live outside the big city, in the suburbs. And here in the area that we live in Canada, it's called the Greater Toronto Area. We have a system called the go train and that's why you see the little go right here on uh, this photograph it is called the go train in many cities there's also a train system that's called a subway subway and usually when you hear the term subway you're talking about a train system that often actually goes down under the ground uh, in tunnels and it may go right under tall buildings and especially here in the toronto area the subway system uh, goes right downtown underneath malls and other stores and tall office buildings that's how people will get into work. They'll get on the subway and go downtown under the ground, and then they'll actually get out of the subway underground and have to go up escalators or stairs to get to the ground level. That's a subway. Now, some cities have placed their trains up on high stilts 
For example, if you visit the city of Bangkok, you will see what's called the Sky Train. And this is a train that is going on a rail system that has been built way above the roads. And there, when you get off the uh, Sky Train, you have to go down the escalator or down the stairs to get to the street level. That's called a Sky Train. Another very popular way to travel, especially if you're going some distance, is to take an airplane. Airplane. And I just might uh, do a little advertising plug here. If you are planning a trip on an airplane, but you're just a little bit nervous about all of the English announcements that might be made at the airport or once you actually get on the plane uh, and you're concerned that you might not understand the directions that are being given in these English announcements. Here at Study English With Us, we have prepared many lessons to help you learn some of these English announcements that might happen at the airport or on board the plane. Another popular way of getting around is the bicycle bicycle. It is a mode of transportation that seems to go in and out of style. I remember back when I first visited the country of Vietnam uh, in 1993. It was actually the first time that I met TK, my wife. Uh, she was living in Vietnam. She had grown up in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City, and she was my translator for the week that I was there filming for ADRA. And we got to know each other very well. We started writing letters back and forth. We didn't get together right away, but eventually we did get married. And uh, now uh, living very happy lives here in Canada with two beautiful children. But I remember my first visit there to Ho Chi Minh City. I'm pretty sure that there were a lot more bicycles on the street back then than there are today. Today, when you visit Ho Chi Minh City... It's mostly motorcycles or motor scooters that are on the roads in Ho Chi Minh City. But back then, I believe, if I am remembering correctly, there were a lot more bicycles. I know that when TK was a girl or even um, a teenager, that was how she got around to go to her school classes and uh, to other lessons that she was going to, she would go across town uh, riding her bicycle. I see a trend now going back to bicycles as people are wanting to become more eco-friendly, wanting to leave a lower carbon footprint. They're selling their cars and buying bicycles to get to work. And so many of the cities in Canada and the United States are turning their road systems into a bike-friendly road. And they'll have lanes that are designed just for bicycles to go on. And then having a smaller lane now for cars and vehicles. And in downtown Toronto, especially, I know that many people who go to work on their bicycles actually get to work faster than they used to when they used to drive their vehicles. And so bicycle is a way to get around today. But for those that don't want to exercise as much, there is the motorcycle. Now, in Canada and the United States, we just do not see as many motorcycles on the road as I am used to seeing in Vietnam uh, and other countries that I visit. But when we do see them, they kind of look more like this picture here. In Vietnam and other countries, it might be more of a scooter. A scooter. Now, this particular scooter we see in the photograph uh, may not be the most popular one in Vietnam because it's so expensive. This is a Vespa, and the Vespa is very expensive. It's made in Italy and I believe costs somewhere around five or six thousand US dollars to purchase one of these scooters. And so and so it's more common in Vietnam 
to see a motorbike, something like this Moto Taxi is driving here, a Honda. This is more typical, I believe, of what I remember seeing on the streets of Vietnam when I lived there. And even if you don't have your own motorcycle, uh, or if it's your motorcycle is in the shop, well, you can call a moto taxi to get you across town. A moto taxi. And uh, in this case, it looks like this moto taxi driver is part of the grab system that we talked about earlier, where you can just go onto your smartphone and call up a grab moto taxi and within a few minutes you'll have somebody at your door ready to take you downtown to do some shopping the one thing about taking a moto taxi is that in most countries today the law says that you need to wear a helmet if you're on the back of a motorcycle and so if you choose to take a moto taxi you're going to want to be sure that you have your own helmet not only to follow the law but to keep yourself safe as well. In many countries, you can also flag down a tuk-tuk. Much like you would flag down a taxi in New York City on the streets, you'd flag down a tuk-tuk, and it'll come and stop where you're standing, and then you talk to the tuk-tuk driver, and uh, it's important to tell him where you're going, and make sure he knows where that destination is, how to get there, but also that you negotiate the price ahead of time before you get into the tuk-tuk, because there's usually no meter system on a tuk-tuk, and if you don't establish the price before you start, it is very likely that when you take that tuk-tuk without negotiating the price, you will get Tuk tuk at the end of your destination. When it comes time to pay, the driver will know that you didn't establish the cost before you got on, and he can quote you any price that he wants. And so it's important to find out how much he's going to charge you to take you where you want to go. Ah, here's a wonderful way to travel the rowboat the rowboat. Not only is it very peaceful and calm, but it gives you a lot of exercise as you go. In fact, here in Canada and the United States, people who no longer live out in the country with a lake, but they live in the city and don't have a chance to exercise very much, they might actually get a machine in their house that simulates this motion of rowing to give them that exercise that moves their upper body muscles and their arms as they exercise with their rowboat machine. But uh, if you are living near a lake, you might want to either get a rowboat yourself or uh, know some neighbors that have a rowboat so that you can go out and enjoy the wonderful scenery, the birds, and the fish that are jumping around you in the early morning fog. It's just a wonderful experience to go out in a rowboat. Something that uh, adventurous people love to do is to go out on a fast-flowing river in a kayak. A kayak. You'll see that the oar actually has paddles on both ends and that allows the individual to paddle very quickly with a motion like this. And people who are very experienced in kayaks can even go over waterfalls and they don't mind if when they land in the pool at the bottom of the waterfall if their kayak turns over and they find themselves suddenly upside down because an experienced kayak operator can, with a certain motion using his paddles, bring himself upright again very quickly so that he doesn't drown there underneath the water. And uh, so a lot of people have a lot of fun using a kayak to go down the river. A much more peaceful way to go down a river 
especially if it's not that fast flowing, is by canoe. Canoe. Canoes were originally designed and made by the Aboriginal people, the First Nations people, we call them here in Canada, the people who lived in Canada before it was called Canada. And so these ethnic people needed a way to get across lakes and rivers, and so they designed and built this canoe system. A couple of years ago, I had the wonderful opportunity of filming some of these First Nation people going uh, on a canoe trip following the pathways of their ancestors. It was a group of young people, and the idea was to help these young people get an idea of how their ancestors used to live. And my job was to film a documentary about this experience that they were having, learning about the old traditional pathways of their ancestors on this 10-day canoe trip. And over the course of 10 days, we paddled over 180 kilometers. It was quite the experience. It gave me a lot of exercise for sure, but it was also a very beautiful experience. I saw amazing scenery and I had a chance to bond with these First Nation peoples as we uh, camped together uh, these 10 nights out in the beautiful wilderness of Canada. This was on the French River. Another wonderful boat that I enjoy from time to time is a sailboat. A sailboat. A sailboat usually has no motor at all and is totally dependent on the wind to get it from place to place. The wind will fill up those sails and take them very quickly uh, to their destination. If there's no wind at all, they might not get very far very fast. Uh, but it's still a wonderful experience to be out on a wonderful lake at sunset in a sailboat. If you want to be sure to get somewhere fast, you might want to instead choose a motorboat. Motorboat. And these boats have engines on them and you can get the engines with various sizes to take you faster and it is a, a good way to go. Now, what if you need to bring your car? In that case, you will probably want to take a ferry, a ferry boat. Now, here in Canada, we have many places off our east coast and also off of our west coast that have islands and destinations that have lots of people living there. There's cities and there's roads, but they're too far to build a bridge to. And so the only way to really get around when you get to these islands is to bring your car with you. Or I suppose you could fly and rent a car, but if you want to bring your own car, your own vehicle, your own minivan, you will want to take a ferry. Now something else that's really fun is to take a cruise on a cruise ship. A cruise ship. And it's important to know that if you take a cruise, when you get on board and you're talking to the employees, especially the captain, which you are often able to do when you go on a cruise, you'll get a chance to meet the captain. It's important to call this by its right name. This is not a boat. And if you call this a boat, the captain will be very offended. This is not a boat, it is a ship, a cruise ship. And uh, so remember that if you are to go on a cruise, to call the vessel by its right name, it is a ship. Another type of uh, ship is a cargo ship. This is another very eco-friendly way of transporting your manufactured goods from one country to another. Horseback. Horseback. 
This is another system of transport. At least it used to be more popular before cars were invented. People, especially in Canada and the United States, would go into town on their horse, and it was called going on horseback. Horses today are mostly ridden on trail rides, maybe out in the countryside, maybe camping trips where people will go on a horseback, or people who uh, have ranches, they might have a farm where they have maybe some cattle on their farm. Well, having a horse is a good way to go out and inspect your herd and see how everything's going. Uh, it's uh, easy to get from place to place on your farm on the horse. And it's just a lot of fun. You can see that this girl is having a lot of fun riding through the fields on her horse. Another fun animal to ride is the camel. Whenever I visit the country of Jordan, I always enjoy taking a camel ride across one of their most scenic desert areas called Wadi Rum. And so every time I go to Jordan, I go down to Wadi Rum and I ride camels through the desert. And it is just an amazing experience to ride a camel and then find a place to camp and sleep out under the stars. You see the Milky Way like you've never seen it before. And then the next day, get on the camel again and go to another campsite. It's just a wonderful way to travel in the desert. Another fun animal to ride is the elephant. And uh, there are some countries today where the elephant is still used as a method of transport, not so much for people, but for heavy items. There are still opportunities today in Cambodia, Thailand, India, many countries where as a tourist you can ride the elephants. And in many countries that I visit, people today are still using an ox cart. An ox cart. Whether it's to take the uh, produce from their field to their home and their storage units, or if it's to take their produce to market, you will see many people on the country roads in remote communities still using an ox cart. Ox cart. In other countries, it's more common to see a donkey cart as a way to take your goods to market or to go to the watering hole and fill up your water tank and bring it home. A donkey cart. A donkey cart. For our last slide, I thought I would show you uh, one maybe more ancient way of transport in the cities was to go by rickshaw. Instead of getting a moto taxi, a grab, or a Uber, you would wave down a rickshaw. But you know, it's not totally gone by the wayside. There are still countries that I visit today, uh, Bangladesh and India, that still use the rickshaw. And I believe that there are still some countries that do it just for the tourist. The rickshaw. All right. Well, those are the words that uh, we are learning in this lesson. And uh, after the break, I'm going to come back and we'll just do a section on vocabulary only, where I won't stop to talk about the words It'll be just vocabulary. And so if you are wanting to go through the words very quickly, kind of a vocabulary drill to help you remember the words by going through them maybe several times, uh, this will be a section of our lesson where you can skip to, when you come back to the lesson, just use that slider bar on YouTube and move it across towards near the end where we will have this section on just vocabulary only. And uh, that way, after you've watched the lesson once, you might want to just skip to the vocabulary only to make sure that you know each of these words. And so stick around. Uh, after the break, we'll do some vocabulary drills. All right, welcome back. And now it's time to do some vocabulary drills. And in order for you to really embed these words into your memory, it's a good idea to repeat after me. 
And uh, that way, as you hear yourself saying the words, they will be ingrained in your memory even more. So don't just listen to the words, also say the words, and that will also help your muscle memory remember how to say the words as well. So it's important. Don't just hear the words, also say the words, and come back often and repeat these vocabulary lessons so that you can teach your mind and your mouth how to say the words properly. Let's get started. Car. 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 Automobile. 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 Truck. Truck. Pickup truck. Pickup truck. Van. 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 Minivan. 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 Utility van. Utility van. Utility van. Taxi. 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 Transport truck. Transport truck. Transport truck. Bus. 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 Train. 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 Bullet train. Bullet train. Bullet train. High speed train. High speed train. Passenger train. Passenger train. Cargo train. Cargo train. Freight train. Freight train. Freight train. Commuter train. Commuter train. Subway. 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 Airplane. 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 Bicycle. 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 Motorcycle. 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 Scooter. 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 Moto taxi. Moto taxi. 
Moto taxi. Tuk tuk. Tuk tuk. Rowboat. 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 Kayak. Kayak. Kayak, canoe, 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 sailboat, sailboat, sailboat. Motorboat, motorboat, ferry, 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 cruise ship, cruise ship. Cruise ship, cargo ship, cargo ship, cargo ship, horseback, horseback, camel. Camel, camel, elephant, 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 ox cart, ox cart, ox cart. Donkey cart. Donkey cart. Donkey cart. Rickshaw. 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 Well, uh, congratulations for making it to the end of this video lesson. And uh, before we leave, I'd like to ask you, what is your favorite mode of transport? Let us know in the comments below. And I would also like to ask if you have found this video lesson helpful, let us know. Do you like the new format? Would you like to see more lessons like this where we not only learn the words, but also learn how they might be used in a conversation in English. Uh, and uh, if we hear from you that uh, this is a type of lesson that you find helpful, we'll make more like this. Otherwise, we might just switch back to doing vocabulary only. What we'd like you to also do, if you have found this video helpful, to like it. That helps uh, here at our channel at YouTube. And also, if you uh, would share it with your friends uh, that may also be learning English. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe. And when you subscribe, also click on the little bell that uh, is right beneath the subscribe button. And that way you'll get notified every time we release a new lesson. And with that, I would like to say farewell. And thank you for joining us for this lesson today. I wish you all the success in the world as you continue to study English with us. So long for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>